Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So in the aftermath of the Cutter Gauthier trade today, Frank Saravalli decided to drop another nuclear bomb on us when he said that he has been hearing Trevor Zegers' name talked a lot in trade negotiations, Pat Verbeek to other general managers, basically offering Trevor Zegers, saying that he is kind of on the trading block. And as a result, he did drop his updated top 25 big board in the NHL of guys that potentially could get traded. So I thought it'd be a fun idea to go through it right now. I haven't seen it. I've only seen the number 25 spot because I scrolled all the way down just to get this ready to go. So without further ado, let's dive into it. At number 25, Jake Gensel. I, I, I could have seen this two to three weeks ago when the Pittsburgh Penguins were like a 500 team. They're clearly back in the mix. And although get, trading Jake Gensel would get you a massive haul because he's only making $6 million as 44 points in 39 games, I don't see it happening. I think they're going to end up trading him or sign, re-signing him. I think they're going to re-sign him because even if you trade Gensel, what are you going to get for him to help win now with Malkin, Crosby, and Latang and Carlson? You're locked in for the next three years. So although Jake Gensel doesn't really fit that mid-35-year-old core, he needs to stay, especially he needs to stay this year if they're in the playoff race. At $6 million, you're not going to get much of a bigger bang for your buck than Jake Gensel in the entire NHL. So I don't see that happening. Next up, Andrew Peak or Adam Boquist. Both... Both of these guys had like high expectations at one point. They looked like potential good top four defensemen. It really hasn't panned out. As a result, I can see a team ch take a chance on Adam Boquist. This was a guy that was like eighth overall in 2018, I think. He was in the Seth Jones trade. He had high expectations, never really panned out. Maybe someone takes a flyer on him. Maybe a flyers take the flyer off, take a flyer on him. Kevin LeBanc. This one's interesting because this is the dude that got, remember, he got waived. And then like 20 minutes later, it was like, no, he didn't get waived. He's obviously not producing this year with only six points in 28 games. And that cap hit is pretty fat at 4.725 million. I still think he could be a good third liner on a contender, but considering even at half retained at around $2.3 million, 2.35, 2.625. But I, I don't think that that's that much of value considering he just hasn't produced this year. Even at $2.3 million, I think a contender could get more value out of a half-retained guy that makes the same amount of money. So I don't think LeBanc's going to get traded. Alexander Texier. <sighs> I, I don't think they trade him. I, I think they keep him. He's not having a fantastic season, but again, he is an RFA. I, I, I think he's going to remain on the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's a decent piece. Manta's a weird one because he's playing good this year. Obviously, 11 goals, 7 assists, 18 points right now, but he does make $5.7 million. I think if the Capitals are still in it, they're going to they're gonna keep him, but I, maybe a team will bite if he keeps this level of production up. But again, similarly to LeBanc, 5.75, 5.7 is a lot of money. Even at double retain, that's around $1.4, $1.5 million. So I think he's going to stay in the Washington Capitals. Samsonov, <laughs> this would be a cap dump. This wouldn't be someone willingly trade for him. This would be if the Leafs do a deadline deal and they're taking back some serious salary, they'll attach a second round pick to say, get Samsonov the hell off my team. I don't think anybody's taking Samsonov as a reclamation project. He's been another disaster. $3.55 million cap it. Maybe the Leafs dump him. He's getting 3.55. That's a $7 million player at half retained. So maybe they, they get something done around that. Mike Hoffman. Mike Hoffman's been traded a metric shit ton, ton at the deadline, but I don't think that he's going to get traded this year. He used to be an elite goal scorer, only eight goals in 39 games this year, 13 points in 39 games, $4.5 million. I don't think anybody's paying for double retention for Mike Hoffman to get that down to 1.125. I think he's going to stay on San Jose Sharks. Jordan Greenway. Interesting case because this is a guy that the Buffalo Sabres gave up a second and a fifth round pick. I hated this trade when this happened. It never really made sense in my opinion because Jordan Greenway was just an okay bottom sixer and it's not like he's that he wasn't that young when he got traded. He was 25 when he got traded to Buffalo. It clearly has not really worked out. 10 points, 28 games, $3 million, one more year after this. I could see a team, if the Sabres retain 50%, which I don't think they will because they're trying to win next year, but even at $3 million, I could maybe see a team, a contender, <laughs> the contender doesn't have $3 million. No, I don't think he's going to get traded. I talked myself out of that. Morgan Frost, I, I don't really see the, the logic that much in him getting traded. He has one more year at $2.1 million. He's definitely worth $2.1 million right now. I don't know why they'd move him. Roslovic, 
Interesting case. Not a lot of games this year, but has been pretty productive. $4 million. I think the Blue Jackets find a way to get rid of Roslevic. 26, not really a part of that young core anymore. I think they move off him. Kevin Hayes, two years after this, 3.57. And mind you, that's on top of an already half-retained salary from the Flyers. Will he get traded? Maybe if, if the Blues retain another goddamn 50% on top of that. But besides that, I, I don't think Kevin Hayes' offense outweighs the negatives that he brings the rest of his game as of right now compared to a couple years ago when he can get you 60 points. So I'm not sure anybody's going to take the bait on Kevin Hayes, but it would be interesting if someone got him at like $1.8 million for the next three years, another double retained, that'd be nuts. Nick Sealer, I think he gets moved for like a fifth round pick or something, a depth defenseman. I think that's solid. Carrier, same thing about, but he does make $2.5 million. Nashville's in the playoff hunt. I don't think he gets traded. Jake Allen. Jake Allen's an interesting one. Not having the best season in two years remaining at $3.85 million. I think it's going to be very hard to move off Jake Allen, considering his stats haven't really been there this year. I think he's going to stay on the Canadians. Marazic, on the other hand, this is an interesting one because he's, uh, although his normal stats don't look that good, it's because Chicago absolutely sucks. I could see him potentially getting moved for a team that, that will take a chance on him at half retained at $1.9 million, gives up like a fourth round pick. I, I, I could see it happening. I wouldn't say it's likely, but he's definitely at a good spot, 11th. Jacob Chikrin. One more. The thing with Jacob Chikrin is you would get a metric shit ton. They didn't give up that much to get him. They gave up, what, a first round pick in like two seconds. I think you could get a lot considering he has proven that he is an elite top pairing defenseman at this point, 25 points in 35 games. And he has one more year after this at only $4.6 million. If the Senators wanted to trade him and retain some money, they could get a, a ton, but I think they're trying to win next year, so I don't really see that happening. But they're going to have an interesting choice between him and Shabbat. I would probably move off Shabbat. We know what Shabbat is. I think Chikrin is the better player as of right now, but we'll definitely see. I don't think he's going to trade at this year's deadline. I think Ottawa's going to run it back one more year, and then at next year's deadline, maybe they trade Chikrin as an expiring guy, but right now, no. Sean Walker, he had a fantastic start to the season. He had like 10 points in his first 19 games or something. He's obviously co cooled down. I think the Flyers are definitely going to trade him if they're out of a playoff spot come the deadline, and I think they can legitimately get like a second-round pick for him. Kuzmenko, the fall-off has been pretty nuts for Kuzmenko. at had 39 goals and 35 assists last year. Still a pretty solid second-liner at this point, I'd say. At $5.5 million, that's about market value. Just hasn't been able to replicate the same success that he had with Elias Pettersson last year. Obviously, he shot like 27%, so he wasn't going to like repeat it. But he's been very disappointing. At $5.5 million next year as well, I think he doesn't end up getting traded this year. I think they get something done in the offseason, kind of like a one-for-one -one swap, but I don't think mid-season a contender is going to, because Vancouver's obviously trying to win. They're not trying to give up Kuzmenko for literally nothing, but I think this offseason we're going to see some one-for-one -one swap kind of happen. Adam Henrique, this is an interesting one. He's having a pretty good year, 20 points in 38 games. Obviously a veteran, solid, two-way player. He could be a really solid probably third line center on a legit contender, half retained, get him at $3.9 million. This would be very interesting because he's been with the Ducks for a while now. What has it been, like five or six? I remember him as a devil, as a New Jersey native, but I think he ends up getting traded. I think I think that'd be stupid. Just just trade him, let Carlson, McTavish, all, I mean, those, those guys are already playing a lot, but like bring in the new guard, don't re-sign Adam Henrique, let him go. Tony D'Angelo, I don't think anybody's going to touch Tony D'Angelo, even at 1.675. He has been healthy, scratched a shit ton, but he's an all-offense, no, literally the definition of an all-offense, no defense kind of guy, and I don't think contenders are really frothing for the mouth for a power play specialist. They usually have their power play specialist by now, so they're not going to trade for that kind of defensive liability. Noah Hannafin. Apparently, an extension is like in the works now. I have no fucking clue. I thought this guy like said, like, I don't want to be in Canada. I don't want to be there anymore. I still think he's going to get traded. And he's going to get traded for a decent amount. He's going to get traded for a first and probably a prospect because he still is a good top pair defenseman. I think it would be stupid for the Flames. He is 26, not that old. But I think it would be stupid for the Flames to sign him long term. Then we got Zegris at number four. Yeah, it's been a bad start. If I was a team, I would I would try to snag him for cheap. If I could get him for a first round pick, a mid to late first round pick, and like a 
roster player, like a middle sixer. I personally would do that. Again, he has two more years of 5.75. So even though he's not producing this year with seven points in 19 games, it's not like you're paying him big money. You're paying him like low end second line money at $5.75 million. That's definitely something interesting to watch. If I was a contender, maybe like a two year rental for Trevor Zegras could be very interesting for my team. Chris Tanev. Yeah, I think he's getting traded. He's going to get like a uh, at least a second round pick, maybe even a first. Hasn't been as elite defensively like in prior years. He's been in like the top two percentile the past three years, but he still is fantastic defensively and going to be one of the main names on the market. Sean Monaghan. I've seen some Montreal Canadiens fans say that they want to keep Sean Monaghan. I don't really understand why. As you can see, he's 29 years old. He's on pace for around 45 to 50 points this season. I think you need to trade him, especially at 1.985. If you retain half, that's an easy first round pick. Someone getting a legit second liner for only $1 million cap hit without even having to double retain, that's going to get you a first round pick. I think you got to do that, no doubt. And at number one, Elias Lindholm, Elias Lindholm, one year or pending UFA, $4.85 million. An all star. Yeah, he made the all star team, I'm pretty sure. 25 points in 40 games. Yeah, uh, definitely not what we thought he was two years ago when he was playing with Goudreau and Kachuk. Obviously not that player, but he can be that legit sec two-way second line shutdown defensive center on an actual contender. I think they're going to get at least a first-round pick plus for him, and I think he no doubt gets traded. There was talks about an extension of like an 8x8 eight eight or something crazy like that. That God, that broke down. Doesn't make sense at 28 years old. It makes more sense to re-sign Noah Hannafin, which I still don't like, but I think Lindholm no doubt gets traded. But let me know in the comments. What do you think about this trade board? Who are some other guys that you personally would have on this board that you think are going to get traded? Who do you think is going to end up getting traded? Who's not? And I'll be seeing you in the next one.